Awesome. Welcome everyone to the Late Night Show with Kenna's Restaurant Guy and Dominic, which Dominic is sleeping somewhere. So anyways, he won't be on tonight, unfortunately, but we have a wicked show lined up. And you know what? We've done a lot of these shows before, but we haven't had a rock star like we have on tonight. I'm excited about this. And you know what? Everyone says rock stars and stuff like this, but she is. She's incredible. I'm excited. And uh, Dominic, you're missing out. And I don't know if you're having a nap, Dominic, or you're, or you're busy right now because you said you might be, but that's okay. I know, I know you're busy. We're going to harass you, though, all night. And uh, we're, 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 we're going to do, I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to definitely call you out somehow. We might even call you to tell you that we're on your show right now and find out what you're doing right now. That uh, <laughs> You're probably having a nap because you are getting old. Anyways, uh, we've got a great show tonight, everyone. Um, this is definitely not a podcast. It does live with all the other podcasts that are out there. And usually Dominic will say that and repeat it to me. Um, maybe we could do like that person, you know, where like he goes, oh, okay, Jay, you know, this shouldn't a podcast. And then pretend he's him and I'm me. Or we just say it's not a podcast. But, you know, we're going to have a great time. Also, we want to just also call out our awesome show that's coming up here may 18th to 21st in chicago the national restaurant association show is happening in chicago and if you go to sign up to be there and you put a podcast 24 you will save 55 dollars into that program so there's our ad read if you don't go you're gonna miss out on so much great things you know what it's 55,000 professionals attend this show it's 10 football fields big they are looking at over 900 product categories. That's not just products. That's categories. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to be seen there. And they also have talks, celebrity chefs, learning learning sessions, I think is what they call it. Deep dive. Who wrote this? Deep dive workshops and live culinary demos. Well, I hope they have that. It doesn't say, and they'll be changing oil in your car. But they probably would if, they, if you asked them nicely. Anyways, it's awesome. We're going to have a great time at the National Restaurant Association show this May 18th to the 21st. And like I said, if you go to the website, sign up and use podcast 24, which is going to be in the our not a podcast site on the bottom. You click on that. You go there, put that in, you'll save. But you only have till May 16th. I don't know what that. Oh, my phone finally started. May 16th, you will only... You only have till May 16th. So if you snooze and you wait till the 17th, you don't get the deal. No deal. But if you do that on the 15th, you get a deal. Right? So there's our disclaimer. We're going to have it in our podcast. So read it. And so no problem. But also tonight, because it is not a podcast, I don't listen to myself like an expert because I don't know anything. There's our disclaimer. But anyways, we're going to get into this amazing guest and she's a rock star. I've been dying to have her on the show for a long time and do a podcast with her. And I'm super excited. She's got tons of energy. She's super cool. And uh, she's got my kind of vibe. I, you know, I was complaining earlier. <laughs> and I feel bad. But uh, she's awesome if she uh, dealt with that. But anyways, Dominic, you're missing a good one. And I've been batting 100 and some on having guests. You're missing out on this one, buddy. I'm sorry. Anyways. Here we go. We're going to do a little intro and then we're going to come back and uh, then we're going to get into this awesome conversation with our guest. There we go. And I'm going to find that bloody button. There it is. Here we go. Be right back. You like that? Is that a good intro? Yes. You make my EDM heart so happy. <laughs> I can't not not dance. You know what I mean? Like I have to. That's like just that. amazing. Well, you know what? There's enough podcasts out there right now in our industry. That I, God, I love you all. But have some fun. Don't forget yeah. that fun, right? And, uh, you know, Dominic is usually here to... You know what? What can we do to represent Dominic tonight? You got any stuffies there? I don't know. Do you, like you guys need like a cor cardboard cutout when he's not here, and have no. its own little mic, <laughs> its own little camera. 
<laughs> Why? I should consult with you. You are so that is awesome. And then, oh, and then you can AI generate his voice. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, like <laughs> exactly, like you know, like that. Like it'd be really cool. I, just I put it on like, one of those things, like a street, like whatever the button thing. You just like whatever I, he needs to I'm say. Sure, I'm sure if we go, <laughs> this will be good tonight. I'm sure if we go to like one of those sites, we can probably get a little stuffy made of him. And then yeah. when he can't make the show, I pull the stuffy up. Yes. Or a puppet. We can get a puppet made. <laughs> a puppet. Oh All right. Anyways, he's I awesome. You um, know what? He's he's the best ghost you can have. And he is also my coach. I mean, he doesn't know that, but I, I pretend he's my coach. And uh, he's a great guy. And uh, right now he's probably... He's, he's having a nap or something because I just text him. Well, yeah, <laughs> you're missing it there, buddy. But anyways, we'll this is all time. about you. This is not about Dominic. It's all about you. Please Heather, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us tonight. We in, in on our show, because obviously this isn't a podcast. Uh, a lot of people think it is and they listen to it like all the other podcasts. But we don't want to. We don't really want to put us, us, us in that category because um they're way smarter than we are and uh we don't want that nope not at all so anyways <laughs> we want to live anyway you know what i mean don't have to yeah exactly it. everyone like edits and it sounds like radio all right yeah right so we want to have like i said i you know i teach this stuff i i i i i i learn this stuff i learn from people um and i found that the best formula is to have fun and don't worry as as our godfather sean walsh F says right is that we should call him that the godfather the godfather <laughs> of food service social media is Thank he, you is he can't is refuse he, he, okay dean's on there dean, hi dean is that <laughs> Wait, what is oh my god <laughs> what is, who's the guy who makes the ai generated images justin of evocalized we need justin from evocalized to make sean yeah. walchef into the godfather the godfather we have to do like the show we can do with him anyways anyways i love sean too and and i have to get him back though because the the, i yeah long story long story like he called me on a show once and i told everyone i fell asleep and then you know you you do 1500 shows later and that's all they remember one show wait 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 wait, wait. you were the guy that fell asleep on the yeah didn't you get that when i was telling you earlier no, I got that, but I didn't realize it was him because he's told that story before. Has he? Shut <laughs> up. I think so. Sean. Anyways, it was me. It was a hot day. I was in my studio. I had a lot of Red Bull. I was coming off a Red Bull trip. And I sat there and then I had some guests on. God love all my guests. But I had one that was a little long in the tooth. Like a long, in, like, I don't know if that's what you say. But just kept talking and talking and talking it was warm and i was comfy in my studio i had a little studio at the time yeah exactly you know you're sitting down and it's cold outside and you're sitting there and the guy's like you know one of those ones that it, you know like it was one of those um you know where the guy's voice will put you to sleep yes it was that moment and then i was like <laughs> and then they said and then the guy goes well how do you know like these people said first of all what i told on sean's show that i had fallen asleep all these people my my inbox inbox on linkedin lit up mm-hmm. and everyone's like who jay like is this serious like but i'm like yeah like it was me like i i i have the i have the ability to say that not it doesn't bug me yeah. <laughs> because um it doesn't bother me it, it's the reality you get with me i'm yeah, clear yeah. i'm transparent Shit i don't happens, care bro. like <laughs> right we all nap Right, we're not perfect. Well, you're like you know producing seven podcasts, so like you're allowed to fall asleep out of one. Oh, of them. A little nap, and, and Dominic, you know, he showed up the other day with a couple pops in his belly, and he was a fun too. So it's okay. Yeah. I haven't done that yet, but you have. Well, I was Monty's gonna have a glass right. of wine tonight, but I was like, yeah. thing, you should have because you should have because Monty broke that rule uh, oh. when we had our first show. He started drinking freaking whiskey in my show. And then, so that now we have people so you can drink you can enjoy yourself relax that's pretty awesome but Heather how we start our shows all the time and what we love to do is all about you so you're a rock star I see you on social media you're killing it everywhere all the time I see your stuff you're so bloody good at it so you have to tell us more about who you are how did you get into that why aren't you running like a law firm or doing something else 
And then how did you get into social media and being the godfather or god lady? Is that how you say it? I don't know. Is there such a thing? Is it godette? Is it godette? How did you become the godette of social media? Yeah. um, Well, again, thanks for having me. This is such a vibe. So I'm totally just loving it, enjoying it. Um, Yeah, I'm Heather Cox, Heather Cox Codes. I've actually been doing social media and digital marketing and WordPress website design for almost 15 years now. 15 years. Yeah. I started when you needed a .edu email to get onto Facebook. I don't even know what that is. So that sounds great. So when Facebook started, you needed, it started at Harvard. And so yep. you needed a college email to even sign up for Facebook. Uh, really? Before Facebook was open to the masses, really? you needed an e- a, a college email address to really? get onto Facebook. Yes. So what did I do? I already dropped out of college, <laughs> but I still had my .edu email from my college. So I used that to sign up. You had that? They still they didn't they did not deactivate it for like Serious. a good while. So I was like, hmm, okay, I'm like gonna this. log in <laughs> using that to get onto Facebook. And you know, ever since then it was like, all right, like I kind of saw the writing on the wall. It's like, wow, like I can literally talk to my customer. Like I could really? like post. I was making pages before they made pages. They were still profiles, but I was making business profiles. So wow. Like I've been on it for like a hot minute and, and how that came around. It was like, I was at an internship and like, Oh, you, you were, you were going the law firm. <laughs> well, I was in an internship at a financial uh, advisors yeah. firm. It wasn't that far off. No, you weren't. And so, you know, when that, when Facebook came out, I was like, I'm just going to make this firm a Facebook profile. <laughs> and then they of course told me to take it down. And then, you know, some shenanigans happened and then I was out wow. and then, um, my mom owned a store in um, what is called Lantana Square of Hocas and Delaware. She owned a, a, a gift boutique for 10 years. So okay. I kind of went back to work there after I lost the job. And then, you know, the financial crisis hit of 2008. And then the Remember store that? closed. And, you know, I turned the key on the last, you know, day closing up. It was really sad. Um, and then I just jumped from job to job to job. And then I was like, you know what? F this nonsense because I don't. <laughs> want to work for anybody else i don't i saw my mom own her own store and shop for like ever since i was three you know she was hustling she was like our front foyer was her store people would come into our house and shop her wares in the front like so i'm like three years old watching my mom hustle making like dried floral arrangements she got (laughs) herself a qvc and so like i you know i'm really do this yeah and so i was like all right you know what I was like, I, I quit. So I quit everything. I was like, F all this nonsense. And then I started trying to figure out what business I wanted to do. I was going to be a Girl Friday. I don't know if you know what a Girl Friday is. Uh. So a Girl Friday is like a like a uh, a personal assistant, a gopher, if you will. Go for this. Go get that. Go get my drive. Oh. You know, all that stuff. Also a VA. I also tried to be a notary. Like, the, this just, you know, trying to bounce around all that stuff. And then I was like, I finally landed back on the whole social media thing. I was like, dude, I've been doing this for like a minute. I, I started doing it and then I kind of fell off. So I was like, let's do this. So I kind of, oh. I made the most generic name, HC Web Designs, because <laughs> why not? My logo was blue, light blue. Ew. Oh, it really? was just not, not great. So... But yeah, I mean, I've withstood the test of time when it comes to social media. Um, and I'm just good at it because I'm a big tech nerd. I love computers. Okay. I love technology. I love AI. I have computational thinking. Like, I just love, <laughs> like, reverse engineering shit when it comes to social media. I love going to, like, constantly going get certifications to, like, bolster all of it. And so, yeah, I'm just a big nerd for all this tech shit. Uh, I love it. You know? I love it. I love it. Well... Now let's let's talk about the connection into our industry, into the food service industry, because mm. you must help people. Because first of all, we need your help. <laughs> like we'll be talking later. Trust me, because we need your help. The industry needs help. I, I so I did a post the other day. I tell a little about me. I guess that, Jay, you shouldn't do this, but you, I have to tell you, I posted a newsletter three times this week. I think it was three or four times. Because I can't take, and, and I love everyone in our industry. I really do. And But you need help with your social people. And 
you can't post empty photos of a, a an empty booth. You can't post photos of an empty booth at a food show and think that's actually a good thing. Please stop it. We need to create a movement like t-shirts or something. Or bumper st- Maybe they yeah. make bumper stickers still. Please, no empty booth photos. Like that's what it needs to say because mm-hmm. it doesn't help your brand. It doesn't help help sell your products. It's, it's actually deterring people from going and learning more about your products because it looks like no one likes your products. Stop right. it and stop putting yourself in the photo. Right. To show that you're working. <laughs> like, right. Please. Please. Right. So we need your help, Heather. We so, really do. We really, really do. You know, like I've been, so on top of me getting into social media super early, I actually started working super early. I started working at the age of 15. I, I branched out from my parent, my mom's store. And I actually, my first job outside of my mom's store was a place called Dome Restaurant and Bar. Uh, oh, it's really? Now, it's now Red Fire Grill. I still go there. Like the same manager still there. So like I go in there and I started really? working with him when he just had his baby. Yeah. His baby's in college now. Like it's <laughs> kind of crazy. Um, and so, you know, I started working there at the age of 15 and I kind of just worked, you know, I worked the front of house to back of house to expedition to the bar, I mean, to everything, you know. Um, and so that's one of my biggest loves is food. <laughs> like yeah. and, and that's also uh, the industry in which you really can't make it polarized on social media and that's where it's kind of like I've always stayed on the side of non-polarizing topics on social media because your mental health can really suffer especially as your social media manager for a long time so I'm like okay what are two industries that aren't polarizing and I could just make people happy real estate and food Food, cool. you love eating it, and houses, you love looking at them. Like I, those are the two things I love. <laughs> so I love interior design. So it's uh, like, okay, let's stay within these two industries. And I and that. I really love working within the hospitality industry. But yes, they do need the help. One of the first things that restaurants tend to get rid of when shit hits the fan in regards to their finances is social media. They chop it, yes, and I'm like, do. well, how are they going to know you're open? How are they going to know your specials? How are they going to know your vibe? How are they going to, you just cut it. And then people stop trusting that you're open and yes. stop trusting that you are a legit business because that's what social media is. Social proof, essentially at this point for a lot of people. So <laughs> you yeah, you do, don't cut the social media and the marketing. That's the first thing when you're finding no. it, the fan, you know what I and mean? It does happen though. It does happen. We see oh. it all the time. And then we see, we also see, oh, well, let's get into, there's so much to work on. Like, I'm so glad you're here, Heather, because there's so much to work on in this space because one, I I believe that restaurants, first of all, one of my models is I believe every restaurant needs its own podcast, but we're going to get there. We, we got to work on that because we need to get the tech so they can do it. It's a little too complicated yet for them. We're going to get there. We got a couple things coming out, but I believe that restaurants need to share their story all the time. And it's funny because I was thinking about this the other day. The re- the restaurants that I see successful are also successful on social. Maybe mm-hmm. not a perfect, but are on there and active. And I'm like, come on. And then today, how else do you get your brand out there? How else today, other than the traditional, we don't want to talk about those things because we know they don't work. Or do they? I don't know. I just, what, what I mean, is it? Heather? how you do it. Right. It's like, so I love to marry the old school marketing tactics with the new school technology. Mm -hmm. Right. Because like, that's what you have to hit both demographics. The old school boomers love a good menu. Don't ax your menus. Right. But then the Gen A's, Gen Z's love a good QR code. So merge it together. Put a QR code at the bottom corner, put it on your table, but also have those menus for those old folks. You know what I mean? And I know that's crazy, but you need to talk to like, you have to cater to the demographics. And right now there is a huge conversion of both demographics. And if you're ignoring one, then you are, you've lost like a shit ton of business. (laughs) And you can't, and you know, it's funny because a few years ago, let's say maybe even like four years ago, just maybe around the beginning of the pandemic, we were actually talking about focusing on, you know, Gen Z and millennials. And then we saw, okay, we'll focus on Gen Z. And then a report came out, I think it was Technomic, said, oh, don't forget about the boomers because they are the ones with the money. And I'm like, oh, 
okay, now it's like like you said, Heather, it's every generation you need to focus on. And and why focus on one? And I think in today's world with all the challenges, and it's a little different maybe in the US and Canada. Canada's really going through some tough times in our industry, mm-hmm. is that they need all the help. So be everywhere, cater to everyone. I like that. I like that a lot. What, what, what do you find most restaurants mess up the most when it comes to social? <laughs> oh, God. Keep it to two. Uh, <laughs> I swear, if I see one more post of a piece of, of, okay, a food plate on the line, on the line. Oh, on the line. Okay, okay, okay. The fryer baskets behind the freaking food plate, and you have it on the line. I see food plates on the steel scratched up expedition line, and it's literally like green lighting from the kitchen, and they're posting that on social media. One photo, not even a carousel or a video. Like, you could at least make that food photo a video. Yeah, it's on the line, but at least make a video. At least you can, like, elevate it some way. Um, um, but don't yeah. do one photo of food, man. I'm just... it's. What it's about so the weird. ones when they hold them? They hold the plate, and they're like, that, please that's come not in. bad, because if you're that's holding the... the plate, and you're like this, no, no, like but the, the, see but... the background of the but restaurant. Doesn't it look desperate? Not really, no. No, you don't think so? I, I always look at it, and it's like, please come in. But here's the thing. It's not desperate. Do you know why? Because the algorithm, and I know this is crazy, and I've okay, seen the go. difference. If somebody's holding a plate and the computers, the algorithm, whatever, notices that there's human element in it, even if it's a hand, it performs better. Really? Oh, oh why? Yes. Like, I, I, I know it's crazy, but, like, having just a little bit of human element, like, the, you know, instead of a food, a, p- a pick of a really? food. Really? Really? Have your hand with the fork in it. That has more engagement if somebody's pretending to eat that something on the plate. Than it's plate. Yes. Shit. Yeah. That's it's good. stupid. It's so ridiculous. Also, you can, like, you know, um, misspell something in your captions and that's like an automatic engagement generator because they're like you wow. walk, whoa, 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 whoa. Long, and then are you serious oh thank <laughs> yeah. god you're like gaming the system right so it's like if you uh. spelled and it took me so i think it's charlie eblin of single tree barbecue today on his linkedin he yeah, spelled the word that. business wrong and i wanted to be like you spelled business wrong. But like I, me, knowing that that's like a tactic, I was like, man, I'm not going to do it. But it is. People will be like, you know, keyboard, keyboard warriors and be like, you spelled business wrong. And you're like, oh, thank you so much for catching really? that error. And that's like automatic engagement because people love to just correct you on shit. <coughs> <laughs> you know. I knew I knew, I, I knew it was a bad speller for some reason. <laughs> that's that right. That is brilliant. <laughs> I, I had a feeling. No, you're right, though. I had a and feeling. And then there's one other thing that everybody's, and I think everybody's getting wrong. If I see one more person share a, a feed photo to the story, <laughs> oh. and then that's it, that's their <laughs> okay. only post, that's their only strategy for stories is to to share that single post to the stories. Oh, God. That is like, <laughs> we oh, know God. you have no strategy when you're doing that. So that doesn't, that, does that hurt you? When you does it like make your numbers? No, go it doesn't hurt you, just... but you look ridiculous because you know that's all you're posting. That's all you're posting. <laughs> that's all you like, know. You know that, like, look, you can make so many cool graphics and videos, vertical videos, like just share yeah. it on the story. Like, I don't understand. So just stop. Have a little bit of story strategy because Jenny, Gen Z, and Gen A consume yeah. content in the stories, and they think that posting on the feed is cringe. So. Really? Yes, I found this out today. I was in the I was in TikToky today, you know, doing my market research every day, and I was in the comments, and they were talking about just like post in the stories and just be more genuine. And people were like, "Yeah, I feel really cringe every time I post on the feed. Yeah, I feel really like cold out. I want to stay in the stories." So everybody consumes content differently. And that's why you have to cater to all these different differences. That's why there's three algorithms on IG, the stories, the reels, and the feed. You know what I mean? Really? So like, yeah. You got to oh hit it all, bro, to hit all the demographics, and it's obnoxious as shit. But <laughs> Now, I know there's systems out there and, and keep that, but what, what do you do to a restaurant? Like, how does a restaurant handle that? Well, I handle that. Okay. 
<laughs> hire Heather and then you don't have to worry about it. That's uh, right. Yeah. You know, and I and I help with like the organization of like the content and the strategy and the posting and the scheduling and the captions. Is and that the- is is that a, is that hard? Because for a lot of restaurateurs, it's got to be like, oh my god, it's a lot of work. Okay, and so then you walk and tell me tell me more about how like how does this work with you? I, I'm okay. fascinated. So we're not here for micromanagers, right? No, no. <laughs> That's like how it works. And I really feel like if you want to have social media in-house because you want to micromanage everything, get Mm -hmm. an independent social media manager to hire in your business and bring them in, right? But then if you are a busy business owner, a busy restaurant owner, and that's why I've been able to like work in this industry for so long, restaurant owners don't want to post on social media. They have so many other things to do. They have inventory, they have payroll, they have hiring, they have firing, they have to pressure wash the side of their freaking restaurant. You know, they got like all this crazy shit to do. So when you hire me, it's like, okay, I look, do you have an existing brand? I have learned recently and I'm sticking to my guns that if you do not have a nailed down brand, brand colors, brand voice, brand logo, all of it, I won't work with you. Because a lot of people really hung up on that branding. They're like, mm. oh, well, now they want me to make the logo. Now they want me to do the, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. no. So like, you know. You got bigger I, problems, bigger problems. In a right, sense, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you don't have a, a consistent brand, a solid brand, you are already early. You don't need to hire a social media manager. You need to hire a branding consultant. They're two different things. You know what I mean? I'm not, I, I, uh, many people try to put me within the, uh, all encompassing. I do all things. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't do logos. I suck at logos. I've always sucked at logos. My sister, she is the large scale mural installationist. And she took all of my art creativity. I'm not good at logos. So, you know, I don't work with brand uh, people who don't have brands, but if you have a solid brand, yeah. Then you call me in and I'm like, all right, I'm going to create that strategy that optimized captions. I'm going to speak to your demographic. We're going to take that brands. We're going to make sure that the social media images and everything match that brands. We're going to make sure that we're getting video in there. I'm going to go to your location if possible and get video of the interior exterior work. And then if that's, if I'm too far, I have them get the content and then they like Google it to me. And like, it's just, yeah, like I, there's so many different ways of working that I'm able to do, but micromanaging and people who don't have a brand, they just, we, you need to get it under control first <laughs> before okay. even working with a social media, media, no. media manager. <laughs> first, I, so I got lots of questions coming. Well, first of all, Dean, Dean, explain comments versus feed. Okay, so the feed is like your normal feed, Dean, where it's like you're scrolling through and you're liking all the hearts. That's the normal feed. But then like the comment section is like the comments underneath that feed post. So there's different Mm -hmm. comments in different areas. You can comment on a reel. That's usually on the reels feed. You can comment on a story because that's in the stories section. So there's actually you can comment on any of the three feeds that are available on Instagram. Wow. Wow. I know. And in that that's important. It's important, right? It's it very is. important yeah. to interact in those feeds. Yep. Okay, question. I have another question for you. Yeah. How much does this improve a restaurant's business? A lot. Um, <laughs> top of mind. Social proof. Brand okay, recognition. Wait, 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 wait. Social proof. Explain that for our people. All right. So I'm going to tell you a story of my own personal experience of social proof, right? I, like I said, I love restaurants. I love food. There's this restaurant down in Verhobeth Beach called La Fable. French cuisine, French chef, the chicken cordon bleu. Oh, triple cream brie from France. Like, I'm just going to talk for a second. So... I, so I was, tr- I was going to go to heirloom, which is another restaurant, but they were closed because okay. it was the off season. I love going to the beach on the off season. So I was like, shit, my favorite restaurants closed. What do I do? So I was like, all right, uh, I'm going to Google, uh, you know, restaurants in Rehoboth, fine dining restaurants. And it popped up and I was like, La Fable. I was like, Ooh, that's, Ooh, it's got five stars. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go there. And I went to their website and I was like, Oh, this looks so good. But I did not know if they were open or not because Mm. it's off season their website did not have any of that updated information so i was like okay i'm gonna go to their social media 
went to their social media. They had not posted since like 2023. And I was like, great, shit, are they closed? I don't know if they're closed. Now I really want to go, but like, I don't know if they're even like around anymore because they stopped posting. So I was Mm. like, all right, where's another place that I could go to get this social proof and see if they're open? Google reviews. So I went to Mm. maps.google.com. I typed in the fable and then an hour prior to me looking it up, there was a five-star review. And I was like, what? They're open. I was like, that means they're open on the off season. That means I can make a reservation. So I went and I figured out, I called and made a reservation. I go there all the time now. It is so delicious. Like just every time I go. Um, But that is my story of social proof. It's like, if I did not continue that customer journey, because I'm very persistent, I will find that information that I'm looking for. But many people won't. They will go to the Google search to find a restaurant. They'll see five stars. They'll go to the website. And then they're like, oh, I don't know if they're open. And then they stop their journey. Hey, can, we, can we stop there for a second? Because yeah. there's something else that Google just launched is the pricing on there now. Not only the Google reviews, but the pricing. What's that doing to people? From your perspective. I mean, here's the thing, though. Like, you got to be careful with that because if you have a Google business listing, which is, yeah. like you said, the maps and the pricing, you need to have somebody managing that. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Can just go over there and be like, their dinner is like five thousand dollars, and then like Google will just take that shit as face value and then change it. Yeah. yeah. So you need a Google My Business Manager as well. I do that too, but I'm just saying, like, you know, no, you, it's good. It really yeah. is because, um, th- there's the well, the risk is so it's so big, it's huge, right? Like the risk is huge. And I said this to someone today. I said, if you're if one restaurant isn't doing it and the other one is on social, one's active, one isn't. I can almost guarantee the one that is is going to be busier than the one that isn't. A hundred percent. And 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 I I don't understand that. Like I just don't understand why you don't want to be busy by doing right. something that's free. Right. In a way, it's free. I mean, right? it's not like for it. Okay, but like if you yes, if you want to save some some dollars, do it yourself. Yeah. Yes. You know I mean? Yeah. 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 I'm saying. But, but better to hire yourself. Like, and, yeah, right. Totally. And I will say Dean is probably listening. And Dean, I always go back to this. And it's what is what is the cost of inaction? Ooh. What's it you have to think about? Like, okay, yeah, you just stopped your marketing. You stopped your social media. What is that going to cost you? How many dollars are you going to lose because you're not on top of mind for people anymore? And that people yeah, can't that get that down, social yeah, proof that, of your restaurant anymore. Really, that is really good. Yeah, that's Dean. Thanks, Dean. <laughs> what is the cost of inaction? I use that all the time, and I close my I close my deals. Thanks, Dean. There's like sales tip of the day. I'm like, all right, all right. Well, you know, you don't want to sign this for fifteen hundred dollars a month for social media, but what do you? What is the cost of inaction? And you know, yeah. I, I just brought on a brewery that I'm working with, and yeah. I just had a meeting with her the other day, and she was like, you know, we p- stopped posting in uh, like December of 2023, November of 2023. She was like, and we saw a dip in sales. She Cheers. was like, it was directly related to us not posting. I was like, well, yeah. So, and everybody's online now. COVID did that. Well, to us. well it 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 boosted it, right? Like I noticed that too. Like it, it's it, it it's. I hate to say it because I don't know if you've tried watching TV lately, but it's now even impact. It's it's becoming the late night thing that people are doing. You know, like I know they've been doing this for a while, but it's just it seems the last couple of years we've hyper <laughs> had to put more hyper attention onto it, yeah. and it's gotten crazy and it's gotten good. Like me and another gentleman, he, we we kind of laugh because I know when he's on and he knows when I'm on. And we laugh because then we get up and then we talk and then we're like, well, I'm not on it. No, I'm not either. <laughs> like, come on. So now we just admit it. Yeah, it was really good last night. Yeah, like it was really good. Yeah. You know, so I think that we're going, and I and I, I believe by doing all this stuff for the last bazillion years too, that it's just going to get better and better and better. And you can see that now. And yeah. I think we're getting away from the days of the, it's still there, but I don't see the garbage as much as you used to. I think people are understanding what edutainment is, mm. and uh, like we we that's why we did our show. We wanted the the edutainment style yeah. of having some fun, but also learning at the same time. 
Um, other than sitting here and going, okay, yeah, they're telling me another, and then getting some slides and telling you the Right, same right, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I was working with a company today, and we we're talking about webinars, and I'm like, why don't you call it something else? Because I think webinars, instantly, I think, long, boring presentations, yeah. and God it's love webinars, conversation, man. but call it something else and maybe do something different. That's them, like but. corporate lingo. You know what I mean? Like that's like permeated <laughs> like webinars and like, let me piggyback on that. And like, you know, <sighs> let's circle back to that later. Like just oh, like so the cool. webinar, like it's, <laughs> it is becoming very overused, overdone. Like you said, the board podcast, you're not a podcast. You know what I mean? Not so at all want to be associated with that and that's how i feel about my podcast too it's like i don't really want to freaking call it a podcast i want to call it like a show like i feel like it's more show vibes than anything well you know what you should and i there you go i i I give you permission okay thank you i'm sure well we'll check with the godfather john (laughs) and uh he says he always says you be the show not the commercial yeah exactly be the show not the commercial jay you said said Um, the show okay (laughs) yeah so we'll we'll check with godfather sean but i'm sure you know no but you're right because and that's the thing and i think that's why i enjoy looking at your stuff all the time and watching you is that you're pushing it heather and that's what i i see and and i have that like we come from the same same mindset i really do i'm just tired today is that I, I have that mindset as well is pushing the status quo and, you know, Steve Jobs for terminology, but I really believe about that. And I believe that before I even knew who Steve was, is that really, I like challenging things and changing things, making them better and funner and, and, and flipping them upside down or doing this and not that. And why don't we do a show and call it not a podcast and, those kind of things. And, and, and everyone's like, well, why are you doing this? Well, it, you know, we want to try something different because I, I am not, and I'm guaranteeing that you're not either is someone that follows the, follows the group. Not at all. Are you? No. So these are, noise. we are the, we are, yeah, we are the people that change the world though, by the way. Right. And that's, we are the ones that, you know, I'm, I'm sure if we, if we dive back into your area, you probably have, you, you painted, Drew painted. No. What'd you do? Anything in the artistic so, side? Anything? So okay. You, you're very artsy. I feel this. I feel this vibe. Heather, okay. Come on. So, okay. Come on. I come from a very very artsy family and okay. a family of business owners. So my mom. Okay. Where are you the then? Wa- the wa- so the my mom owned the Wallflower Gift Boutique and now she owns the Fairy Potter, which is a fairy house potting co- pottery company. Right, that okay. she makes fairy houses to put in your garden. My younger That's sister cool. is a landscape horticulturalist. She owns a landscape development company, and she does large scale mural installations. Hey, like, okay, where are you? Okay, hold come on. on, I'm almost there. My Stop older me. sister lives in New Zealand and is the owner of Mockingbird Studios, and is oh, going oh, on oh, the oh. USA tour uh, this summer. Um, and I am. Like, so my older sister got all the music. My younger sister got all the art. Me, I got all the technology. So I've been on mm. app, like an Apple since like sixth grade. Like I was doing like MySpace. <laughs> like I was doing like HTML coding on like, you know, you would yeah, change okay. the background yeah. on your MySpace. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's what I was, I taught myself how to HTML That's still code. creative, but that's still creative. In my it life. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was creative. And I, just... I do like the creative through tech, not I suck at drawing. I suck at yeah, but I feel you know, no, but the, but the, and this is the thing. Like I have a history degree in art, and yeah. and I and I have a painting. I actually went to university, and I have a major in painting. That's why I liked you. My favorite <laughs> subject was art history. Yeah, I have. A, I like it. So <laughs> I believe it doesn't matter the medium that you use. Mm. If you're creative and innovative, that is me being yeah. an artist in a way, right? Like if you look at, and I think that's why I like your stuff because you're innovative in how you approach and share the content that you're producing about your business, about who you are. And I see that and I'm like, man, well done. Well done. And I'm sure it's not easy. I know it's not easy, right? This stuff is not easy. If we make it look easy, then try it because it's it's a lot of bloody I still can't wrap my brain around the fact that you manage seven podcasts. (laughs) I'm doing one and I'm like... (laughs) 
<laughs> I just want to drown. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it is a lot right? of work. It's a lot of work and it's a lot of coordination and it's a lot of on your own time stuff. So yeah, it is, but it is fun. I, I, and and I then for you to it. have a full-time job too, yeah. bro. Yeah. Bro. Like, yeah. well, I love both. I love both. And they both kind of work hand in hand. Right. And, you know, so I, here's what I do when I do my show. And another one of my secret sauces is that I take the information that you share like tonight. And that just adds to my knowledge base. So when I'm mm. working every day and I'm helping businesses, because that's what I do for my job is that I'm using that knowledge. So I'm just gaining more knowledge. So it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm homework every night is learning by these amazing guests that we have on our show, having a little fun with them, um, but learning as well. So I, I actually use my learning all the time. I like to have a break once in a while, though. Not going to lie. <laughs> once in a while, yes. my brain needs to shut down. Yes. Um, but I love what you're doing. I really do. And I think I think our industry really needs, though, like, how do we, like, what, how do we get that message into them, though? How do we tell them? Because you're, you know, you're way down in the U.S. and we want you up here in Canada because we're going to, hopefully you can do Canadian stuff and I'm sure you can. Yeah, social. sure. Why not? Right. You know, you just have to use a lot of A's and all A's. those things. And, and bacon, apparently we're bacon pros up here too. Um, but we have to, we have to, because I get asked, I bet you once a week, if not twice a week, maybe more about social and website development and yeah. social media all the things that you do and we're still hearing people that don't know this and we still hear people learning about the importance of it like when is this going to end or is it always going to be like this well it, it's always a learning curve you know what i mean when anybody starts a new business many people really don't understand the internet a lot of people are starting later i mean it it and then there's so many different voices and so many different pieces of advice. Everybody yeah. thinks they know everything. So it's just like, okay, well, like, yeah, you. I may be giving you a piece of advice, but now your business coach is telling you something different. Yeah. It's like, well, is your business coach a, a coach a web designer? No. Is he a social media manager? No. Well, then just shut the F up because, like, you really don't know what the F you're talking about. You're yeah. here to kick somebody's ass to, like, get it in gear. Yeah. But, like, you can't derail. A, like, a, So I just find that a lot within, like, the corporate space and the hospitality and restaurants. It's just that, like, a lot of the times it gets derailed by, like, red tape and yeah. people not knowing. And so... No. I don't know how to get people to understand that. Yes, you need a website. Yes, you need your Google My Business listing. Yes, you need social media. You yep. need it all together. And and you as an art history major would understand, you know, I look at it as like a bird's eye view versus a bug's eye view, right? People yeah. are so like hyper-focused on Instagram and they're like so hyper-focused, but then their website takes 20 freaking minutes to load. And it's like, you got to take a step yeah. back, buddy. Yeah. You got to look yeah. at the whole digital landscape. So, so so, how important is an audit on your social? Do you do that too, Heather? Audits, yeah. Yeah, like look at everything and then look at it from a from a consumer or customer? I do. I look at from I look at it from like a consumer standpoint, a user-friendly like, you know, accessibility wow. standpoint as well, also from different demographics. So like the boomers love a good PDF. Even though they don't know how to convert it, they do love a good PDF. So they love to like click on their PDF on the website to look at the menu and then even possibly print it if they have a printer. Wow. They probably don't because they're old. But that is or they like, do, no, just wait. They do, but they don't know how to change anything. <laughs> they don't know how to use it. <laughs> but it's like that's what you have to do. It's like you gotta, like I said earlier, you have to cater to both. So it's like, okay, you got to have that link that says click here to view the menu in PDF form. But then you also need a mobile responsive website so that, you know, the Gen Zs and Gen As can like look at your website instead of having to pinch and squeeze and expand. And then they're just like F this website and then they leave and then you just lost a customer. So it's like you got to cater to both and you have to have a digital presence for both. Wow. It's, especially for older generation because they're getting older. They're actually, I just got done um my certification course at the hong kong polytechnic university for hospitality and tourism industries wow yeah so i'm certified in that john that's my fourth certification and they were talking about the silver-haired tourists the silver-haired okay tell us more yes so silver-haired <laughs> tourists are boomers but they're living longer and they have money to spend 
Okay. So they are traveling, going to restaurants, dining out, enjoying the finer things of life. So you have to cater to the older demographics still, but then they're also giving money to their Gen Z, Gen A grandkids to go oh. also travel and eat and do the fun stuff. So, so it's kind of oh. like you have to cater to both because that's where the money's coming from. And then when that tra- wealth, wealth transfer happens, forget about it. Like, <laughs> it's gonna be I love it though. I love it though. But so it, it is quite dynamic then. It's crazy dynamic. Yeah. Of how you look at things, right? So, I, so I've got more questions here. A couple more. Yeah, man. Important. So we're, let's step a little bit outside of um, social outside in of the, the restaurant industry. Yeah. No, no, by the way, it's on a podcast. Um, we have we have a comment here too. Let's check here. Um, <laughs> Jones Generation Dean said. So I do want to ask this because I think this is the question I have. How important is social media in, t- in the B two B space? Oh, yeah, really, really important. And I really think, and I know, like... Okay, can you say that again? It's really important. <laughs> it's really, really important, you guys. Um, and, and I say this, and okay, so I'm going to take an example. I was working with a lawyer, and he had two different entities. He had himself, yeah, right, his personal brand, but then he mm-hmm. also had his law firm brand. He's mm-hmm. not the face of the law firm. He just worked within the law firm. He's founded yep. the law firm. He doesn't want to necessarily be the face. So, and that it actually, the business brand actually works better to the B2B space instead of like the personal brand. I call PB, the PB2B. Um, you know, if that works better because they see that you have this corporate entity and they know what the F you're doing, which means it creates that social proof and that brand trust. That means they're okay, okay, working with okay, you. Heather, so, so you're saying that it's almost, would you say then it humanizes the B2B then if you have a human? Yes. So it see, does. I, and- I, I just noticed this at Walmart is that the CEO is now doing updates and being very visible on social media. You know, I'm kind of like Walmart. I'm kind of like, you know, you're not bad. Like, and then he was on Simon Sinek's podcast. And he's kind of talking. And I'm like, are is this the new B two B guy? Like, is this now the face of Walmart? And and I know what it looks like. And he showed up, not dressed in a you know a thirty thousand dollar suit, but shirt and a, and he had the name tag like everyone else. Those things are important, right? Like, yeah. please tell me I'm not on. Yeah, I mean, and and I really do try to hammer down, be like, look, like we need a human element in this business brand. You need a human element in the business brand. Um, My favorite business brand is Duolingo. I don't know if you know who Duolingo is. Just give me a step, I'm writing this other thing. (laughs) So Duolingo is the... um, Hey, we do it. We don't call this a podcast. We break every rules. On Monday, we had a bathroom break. You ever had a podcast and have a five minute bathroom break? No, <laughs> we do that. We can do that. That's why That's so we're funny. such a cool one. Anyways, sorry, keep going. No, you're good. So, Duolingo, <laughs> um, they are the uh, like language app, like language learning app. Yep. Uh, they are a business brand. Duolingo is a business brand, but how do they humanize it? They got a big old mascot named the Duolingo Owl. I think his name is like Duo or something. And he's literally unhinged. He's unhinged. He literally try. He like he he threatens to murder you if you don't do your language lesson. He'll like oh, really, really, yeah. So like, do the, tick, okay. the TikTok is just ridiculous, and that is one way a brand can really humanize by getting like a mascot or like an influencer to be the part of the brand. And and it is difficult because not a lot of people want to be the face of that brand. Not a lot of restaurant owners want to be the face of their restaurant. They really don't. So what restaurants are doing now is really leaning into the influencer side of things and like Mm -hmm. bringing in influencers on a contract monthly basis, being like, you are our restaurant influencer and you will talk to the camera for us and you will talk about our brand. And so like there's multiple ways that you can humanize your your business brand but a business brand is necessary sorry now I, does 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 um okay so that's freaking awesome how like when we talk about like um can we get the owners and the chefs to become some sort of that brand like a chef and stuff like this like i know it's tricky and i know it's t- difficult 
But the you know the godfather of social media in our industry always tells us to pull our phones out and take pictures and use our phones and stuff. And I, I I believe in him. I believe in what he's yeah. saying. And and he does it did it on Saturday and we all watched him. He's awesome at it. How do we get these owners to understand that? Like how do we do we just show them examples of what it does? Or how so do we I convince- had like this bomb ass idea and I've been giving it out because I'm freaking awesome. So <laughs> I had this great idea. I was um, presenting at the Delaware Restaurant Association. It was like the fast forward symposium. And I was there talking about social media and AI marketing and restaurants. And I had this just glorious idea that restaurants should have a content phone behind the bar. Content phone. Yes. A content phone with like a big old yellow electrical tape on it that says like bar content phone or something. And literally like... If there's some downtime and it's slow, like go get your employees to have some freaking fun. Grab that content phone, make some reels, make some TikToks, go in the back, go to the chef. And then at the end of the day, take that content from that content phone and upload it to the Google Drive and give it to your Uh social media manager and marketer. So you're getting the content, you're getting that human element, and it's not from a personal phone. That's the problem. It's not, it can't be a personal phone. It has to be, you know, it has to be like an actual phone that the restaurant has, not mine. I'm not going to be like a server and being like, hey, Joe, can you get some content for me? (laughs) Be like, this is my personal (laughs) phone, dude. Or like get a content phone. Love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. (laughs) I, I think it's so important. Now, um, I like I could probably talk to you all night on this stuff because it's fascinating and we're it's definitely gonna fun. have you back because it is so important though because we I, honestly I, I talk daily about this and I want I want to leave on this one because I want you to answer this because I'm sure you're gonna rock the world on this answer <laughs> how important is branding today in businesses and also personal so let's start with business how important it is to have a brand and then how important it is to have a brand as a person you need a business brand. I don't care what anybody says. Like, okay. What do you mean though? Like, tell me you more. Need, about okay. So like you need to have the logo. Your logo needs to talk to what you represent, what you're offering, what your services are, right? It needs to be visually in that your logo needs to tell a visual story about what your services and brand are. Mine is Heather Cox codes. My logo is literally two HTML close brackets. And that says Heather Cox codes. It's literally mm-hmm. my name is inside at HTML bracket. Like that's literally that's visually showing you that I'm doing like coding. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I got, so I got. like think about like how you can visually represent your brand. Make sure that the colors are on point, right? Like I'm glad that you have the red background here and not like the red lettering on your logo because like the red lettering would probably like make my eyes explode. So like, you just got to think of like the, your accessibility of your branding, right? Because like, I can't see you if I take my glasses off. Like I have horrible, horrible eyesight. And so when I see something crazy, like contrast on my phone, I'm like, okay, I don't ever want to see this again. And I don't want to go to your restaurant. So like, you got to think of accessibility. You got to think of the branding. You got to think of your demographics. You got to think of the cohesion, right? If you're a business brand and your website has a great brand, but then you go over to your Instagram and it's like, everything's fuzzy. It doesn't make sense. You have no bio filled out and you're like, so like you have to make sure there's cohesion. And that's why I say, take a a bird's eye view to your branding Mm -hmm. for your business. And then also for the personal branding, it just depends really on if you want to be that brand, not everybody wants to be a brand, right? I had a brand. I had a different brand. I had a BGWD. That was my business for a very long time. Um, I was like a social media superhero. I even had a caricature of myself um, because I did not want to be in the spotlight for a very long time. I went through a lot of shit. I was actually stalked by two different people online and very early on in my career. Mm. I kind of like flipped the script and I was like, I'm not being in the public eye anymore. Like I have this caricature. Like I'm just going to pretend I'm this superhero, not even use my name. But then people would say, hey, this is Heather Cox of BGWD. And I'm like, 
okay, well, then I guess they know me by my name, so I guess I need to brand myself as such. And that's what I did. And when I did that, it was like skyrocket. Granted, really? COVID then happened, and then it was like social media kind of like blew up anyway. So it was like maybe wow. just like the coupling of both where it was like I've stepped into my senior brand. That brand 15 senior years ago brand. that I started was my freshman brand. It was very sophomoric. It was very thrown together. But this brand now is very thoughtful and more mature because I am more mature. I'm not that 21-year-old that started that business long time ago. So – your brand needs to reflect where you are. I used to show mm. up in engagements and shit. My hair all done up and makeup. And I wear the tight dress and the pointy heels. And I was just like, that's not me, man. Like, so mm -hmm. I, you need to reflect what your brand is in your brand. And, and, and it has to be authentic, I'm guessing. Yes. Because that's yes. you, right? You have got to be yourself. And I think that's what I love so much is that I, I train a lot of that is I tell people the best thing that I noticed with marketing today in our industry, the best part, of all of it is you just got to be yourself. Yeah. And, and that's the crazy part. I know we, it's so funny that we actually have to tell people that, but there was the nineties and eighties and the seventies and sixties. We turned plastic for some reason. And then just recently, I think COVID really sped it up. Mm. Is this being purely authentic and, and maybe like some social sites as well as caused that too. But just being 100% authentic and real. And I also have a saying that imperfection is perfection in this yeah. year moving forward, right? So that's why, you know. I'm a recovering right? perfectionist. So Are you? Are yeah, you? yeah, very much so, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it. I love yeah. it. No, I, you know what? It's hard for people to be imperfect. Imperfect. I don't know if that's a yeah. word. Not perfect. And, yeah. uh, is, and, I, and there we go. I just screwed up. Is that... Um, but that's <laughs> that's what I believe in because I will never be perfect. My good lord, I will never be because I just can't. There's and no I try, thing. and I don't. I know, but like I know a lot of people. Even the other day, I was showing someone's like, "Yo, you spelt this wrong." I'm like, "Yeah, it's, I don't really care." Like, but you got the engagement on it, didn't you? Well, no, it was an internal thing, and I was oh, like, "Oh, I was like," they're like, "Oh, look at this." I'm like, <laughs> okay, and I said, I'm like, all right, like, I don't really care. You're like, but you engaged with me because well I spelled it wrong. How you doing you know, today? <laughs> yes, well done. You found that. Good job. Thank Frickin you. My te you know, my teachers in oh. grade oh, nine are crawling in their graves. Anyways, but I, I do, I do think that imperfection is perfection. I do believe restaurants have an opportunity now because, as our godfather of social media and our industry. He's always out there showing us great things on what it means to be real and authentic. And that's why mm. I hit it off when I met Sean. Um, we did a talk in Toronto a couple years ago um, on the stage. That's when I first met him in person. And it was just like, yeah, dude, I, like what he said, it resonated with me. And, and I really believe in that. And now I take that mindset and I train up here in Canada. The same kind of message is just be yourself. Right. And that's the best part. And the best part is... Our industry is so creative and nutty and, and crazy and fun. And, yeah. you know, the people that are putting it all together and all these restaurateurs and chefs, guess what? We don't need to be fake because we're entertaining enough. Mm -hmm. And that's what's the beauty of it. And I try to capture that with with our shows and what we do. But, well, you're Heather, you know, we're going to have to have you back because yeah. um, we'll make, like I said, we have no rule. That's the best thing I like about podcast one. No fucking rules. So there's no rules. If you want to be a radio station, go ahead. They're Yay. dying, by the way. Um, just so you know, good job. Um, but I'd like to have you back for like a part two. I think everyone would agree. F part yeah, two, man. We'll have you back. And I just want to thank you for everything you're doing. And and I, I love the fact that you're so cool and energetic and you're changing people's lives. It's oh, awesome. You. And Dominic, you missed another one of a rock star. The fire, and Dom. Yeah, exactly. You owe Dominic. me some Canadian Dom. bacon, Dom. <laughs> yes, Dom. You're gonna have to, well, he's gonna be in Florida. He's going to Florida tomorrow too. So um, but I want to thank you again, Heather, for tonight and I hope yeah. everyone else enjoyed this not a podcast episode of the late night restaurant show. You know what, Heather? We'll have you back and to everyone else, have a great rest of your evening. Thank you. And you know what, Heather? We we tend to turn up the music and enjoy a little dance here. Yeah. Uh, we're not we're not fucking Alan, so don't do that. But uh, <laughs> thanks again, thanks again, Heather. Thank you. Thank you.